This winter we had an honor to make an architectural model for exhibition of one of the 70s modern architecture gems that once was built in Latvia, Jurmala, and met Ujis Schoenbergs, the son of the architect who designed the building we were modeling. And it turned out Ujis, like his father, also was an architect with many extraordinary buildings in Latvia. While assembling the architectural model in the exhibition hall, Ujis told me about one of his most innovative projects, the Urban Dice. It was a concept house he had designed for Architecture Biennale 2006 in Venice, Italy. And the idea is that each side of the dice serves a different purpose. One as the kitchen, the other one as the living room, the next one as home office and so on. To access different room in the cube, you would have to roll it a couple of times. It was very intriguing and eye-catching idea that got a lot of attention in the architect community worldwide. After the exhibition in Venice, the portable house concept was still rolling around in his head. So a couple of weeks after the opening of the exhibition, Uji Schoenberg sent us an image of the updated urban dice shape and asked if he could create miniature model to better understand how the cube would roll and behave under different circumstances. So we 3D printed two different size models and gave them to Ujis for further inspection. And it turned out the new shape did perform better than the original one. So we had to find a way to make the frame for the shape using plywood. It took quite some time to come up with a frame design that would create the necessary shape and have only three different components. So we cut the parts for the concept on our CNC router and assembled it using small screws. When designing complex projects it's helpful to create small prototypes. It gives you a better understanding of the shapes and proportions than it would when looking at the object on the computer. It also gives you more confidence before committing to build the actual size object. This approach is commonly used among designers and architects. Anyway, the small scale model looked fantastic and my niece loved it as well. But most importantly, Udi Schoenberg felt confident about the concept we had created and gave us the guidelines to stick to when creating the Urban Dice Plywood Edition. The design had to be as light as possible yet sturdy. It had to consist of small components that are easy to manage and transport. And of course the result had to be beautiful. These were challenging guidelines to fulfill for a plywood frame that would be 2.6 meters in height and could be rolled around on different surfaces. The size of the object and the unusual functionality made me anxious and I wasn't sure how I would make a frame that wouldn't break after rolling it more than a thousand times. So I designed multiple variations of the urban dice and narrowed them down to one simple yet sturdy looking design. The only problem with this model was the weight. According to my calculations, it will weigh around 116 kilograms. It's not that much for a house frame, but it's quite a lot for an object that has to be rolled around. So I made some cuts in the design and managed to get the weight down to around 90 kilograms, which was great since the original cardboard dice weighed around 70 kilograms. The design was ready for CNC operations, but before I turn these 11 sheets into the components necessary to build the dice, I have to slice them into smaller sheets that could fit on our CNC's work surface and optimize the part layout for most efficient CNC work. I created 7 different programs to cut the parts, and it was only a matter of loading the sheets on the CNC and removing the parts from the work surface after the cuts were done. First, I cut the frame reinforcements and the corner parts. Then I cut the side components and corner reinforcements. I wanted to see how the parts would fit together and how easy or hard it would be to assemble the plywood urban dies before cutting all of the parts. So I assembled one of the corners, attached the corner reinforcements, installed the frame reinforcements and added the frame sides. The assembly looked large but it felt sturdy even without securing the parts together with screws. Since everything seemed to be working fine, I loaded the next sheet on the CNC router and took apart the test assembly so I could trim the component edges. While I was trimming the edges and preparing the parts for assembling, the CNC was cutting the next batch of parts for me to work on. Making 190 components was a time-consuming process and I had a lot of time to think of things that could go wrong. Even though I was confident the frame will be strong, I wasn't so sure about how well it will roll considering the size and weight. 
but my biggest concern was the ability to assemble the whole thing. Usually when designing more complex items I always spend considerable time thinking about how I will be able to assemble the project and somehow I forgot to do so when designing the urban dice and I knew assembling the large cube won't be as simple as putting together the prototype we made earlier. But the parts kept piling up and soon we would see if we hadn't wasted our time and 11 sheets of plywood. I freed up some space in the workshop and took the corner components to join them together. Then I installed the edge inside reinforcements to both sides and secured them in place with a couple of screws. I added the corner reinforcement plate to ensure the corner stays in place. It also ensures the right angle between the frame edges. After the corner was secure, I added the edge outside reinforcements. The outside edge components consisted of two parts joined together with a dovetail joint. Also the frame side connects the corner component using the dovetail joint. Since the side component has these grooves for the edge reinforcement parts and the extension joints overlap, I was 99% confident that each edge of the frame would be sturdy. When the first edge of our frame was assembled, it was time to install the second corner. I added the corner parts using the dovetail joint, slid in the other two corner parts and secured them together with the corner reinforcement plate. When attaching the corner reinforcements, I didn't add any screws. I was worried that if the screws were in place, I might not have enough movement in the corner joints to add subsequent frame edge components and wouldn't be able to assemble the whole base. Assembling the edges was simple, just adding the components one by one and securing them in place with a couple of screws. While assembling the first three edges of the urban dice, I was wondering if I would be able to assemble the last corner and join two edges together. I had a bad feeling about it. The last corner was challenging to make, I had to attach the sampled corner to both edges simultaneously and fit the edge reinforcement components in the grooves. And it took me a couple of attempts before I managed to join the double joints between the corner and the side component. To secure the corner I added the plate component. The last challenge was installing the edge outside reinforcement. I had to get it inside the grooves and join the dovetail joint with the other reinforcement part. And it worked. It meant we will be able to assemble the urban dice. Well, maybe. We still had to assemble 8 corners and 20 edges, so there is a chance of some components not fitting together. Anyway, I finished adding the screws to the frame and realized I won't be able to assemble the whole project in my workshop, so I took the frame outside. And of course I had to roll the workbench with all the parts next to the project. I had the foundation and it was time to build the frame upwards. I started by assembling one of the triangle edges and inserting the edge supports in the corner component grooves and securing them with screws. When the first edge was in place, I assembled the other one, again securing each component with screws. The most challenging part when building the frame was installing the corner components. It was a difficult task to fit the edge reinforcements into grooves and join the corner parts with the frame side component. And the dovetail joint did require some force to attach. To secure the corner parts, I added a couple of screws. However, before the first triangle could be considered done, I had to attach the frame reinforcement component and the side part. Then I could secure them in place with screws. Oh, and I attached the corner reinforcement plate as well. Now I knew I could assemble the triangles, and it was just a matter of erecting all four of them. All the steps when assembling the edge frames were the same. I used a different corner reinforcement plate to reinforce the second triangle's corner joint. This was made out of 12mm instead of 9mm plywood as the other reinforcements. And before installing it, I had to attach a hook in the middle of the plate. It will be useful if we manage to assemble the whole thing. Anyway, I was slowly running out of daylight, but I managed to assemble one more triangle and test how well the frame held together when rolling it on one of the triangles. Since the forecast showed it might rain at night, 
I lifted the frame on a couple of tiles and covered it with a plastic film. If the frame got wet, the wood would expand and the components would be more challenging to assemble. Needless to say, I didn't want that to happen. The next day was rainy and I could continue assembling only in the afternoon. As the first thing, I installed a large corner reinforcement to the triangle we had built last. This one also had a hook screw in the middle. Then I proceeded to build the final triangle of the first floor. Seeing how the urban dice started to take shape was so exciting and I loved how it looked and the component pile was getting smaller as well. When all four triangles were in place, I could assemble the next level of the frame. Since each edge consisted of the same components, this wasn't that different than building the triangles. We still had to attach the frame reinforcements, install one of the side parts and attach the other half of the frame outside reinforcement, secure it in place and attach the other side of the frame. When the parts were secured, I could join both edges together. The only challenge was the height. The top corner was 2.6 meters off the ground and for me to be able to add the necessary screws, I had to step on the stool to be able to reach the corner. Installing the next frame sections wasn't as hard. I could roll the frame on the different side. It made it easier to access the parts of the frame that I had to build without using a ladder, which was nice. At this point we had assembled approximately half of the frame, but I still had my doubt if the whole project will come together as it was supposed to. You see, the design we are assembling now consists of four hexagon shaped frames interlocking each other and so far we hadn't assembled even one of the four hex frames and I was worried if I could even assemble the first one and even if I did we would still have three more to go but with a little bit of struggle the first hex frame came together. This gave me confidence and the frame looked astonishing even though only half of it was assembled. So I was excited to build the remaining urban dice. The steps were the same, adding new parts, securing them in place, then adding more parts and more screws. According to my calculations, this project required me to install a total of 1096 screws. Needless to say, it took some time. But edge after edge and corner after corner, the urban dice was coming together nicely. The final frame side part was challenging to install, but with a little bit of hammering it went in place and we managed to assemble the main frame before the sunset. However, we still had some parts that had to be installed and secured in place. So the next day I went outside to drill the pilot holes for the corner reinforcements and secured them in place with a bunch of screws. When that was done, I could attach these little corner clover parts at each corner joint and secure them in place with four screws. But to finish the project, I still had to cut a couple of parts on the CNC router. If you noticed, we had these holes in the large corner reinforcement plates. The holes were designed for these simple reinforcement sticks. I just had to slide them through the holes and secure them in place. And finally, the plywood urban dice was done. I met all the criteria set by Udi Scheinbergs. It was light enough to be rolled around. It consisted of small parts that can be fitted in a trunk of a car and the frame looked astonishing. And yes, the structure was sturdy enough for me to climb on it, sit on it and use it for calisthenic workouts. But to fully enjoy the results, I had to attach a hammock to the hooks we installed earlier and take a break from all the hard work that went into this build. I still have to show the result to Udis and see his reaction to our take on the urban dice that once was showcased at Architecture Biennale in Venice. And I know we still have a lot of work to do to make this concept into something functional and magnificent. And we will be documenting our journey along the way. So I invite you to subscribe and join us on this adventure.